Hello everyone, my name is Sister Anna Rose and I'm so excited to welcome you to this first talk in our Lenten series of reflections. So here we are on Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, and I'm just very happy to be able to share a few minutes with you as we get ready to journey together during these next days. So what I'm going to be sharing about over the next few minutes is some just practical logistical details as to what our weekly reflections are going to look like, what our share groups are going to look like, and then I just like to take a few minutes to give some of the big picture overview of where we're going to be going throughout these next weeks together and then end with a bit of a personal reflection for all of us as we begin the season of Lent together. Each week during the season of Lent, our sisters are going to be sharing reflections with you that will be posted on our Facebook and on our YouTube channel that are based off of the Sunday readings for Lent. So you'll be hearing our sisters share a little bit about the content of the scriptures for each week and they're also going to be sharing then some personal reflections on the, on the scriptures as well. So these reflections will be posted each week for you to be able to view on the Thursday prior to the Sunday that they're pertaining to. So you'll be able to view them a little bit early if that would be helpful for you and they'll also remain posted after the fact if you'd ever like to refer back to them. These video reflections are really meant to be helps for those of you who are joining us in our weekly share groups and for anyone who's, who's going to be viewing them throughout the season. So if you're participating in a share group with one of our sisters or perhaps as part of another parish program, we really hope that these videos can help you to enter in, to uh, inspire you to encounter the scriptures in your own prayer time, and also to be able to give you some material to be able to share about in your weekly discussion groups. And then finally, we also have some other material, some other uh, resources, if you'd like to take advantage of those that will be made available to you on our website. So if you go to our website, at the top of the page, you'll find an events tab. And if you pull that down and click on Lenten Retreat 2021, you'll be able to find different information there about our Lenten Retreat that will be happening on March 27th at the end of Lent. And there's also going to be resources that pertain to our weekly share groups. So you'll be able to find discussion questions there. There'll be resources there for those who are interested in having more guidance as to how to pray with scripture or just how to pray in general, if that's something that would interest you and that you're looking to be renewed in or to learn for the first time. And we'll also have some different resources there for those of you who are participating in the groups weekly. So that's just some, some things that we hope that can be helpful to you during the weeks of Lent. And so what I'd like to do now for the next few minutes is just to kind of give a big picture overview of where we're going to be going together. So as we all know, Lent is a journey. We've probably heard that phrase or that imagery used before. It's a journey together in the desert. And so we're about to be entering into that. And particularly what myself and my other sisters are going to be sharing about is the journey that we're going to be going on with the chosen people, with the Israelites. And so each week we're going to see them journeying throughout the desert and in different places. And one word that I really want you to listen for during these weeks is the word covenant. So we're going to be hearing a lot about this word throughout our different reflections. We're probably very familiar with it as Christians. We hear it a lot in our prayers. And my sisters are going to be really breaking that open for us throughout these next weeks. But what I just want us to remember from the outset is that when we hear the word covenant, we are to be attuned to the fact that our Lord is in the process of bringing people into relationship with himself. So it's a very relational word. And that's something to be aware of whenever we hear it. That's the language God speaks. He speaks in the language of covenant. And so whenever we hear about this word, we're to be attuned to the fact that our Lord is in that process of bringing a, a person or a group of people into relationship with himself. And it's not just any relationship, but it's a relationship of family. It's a very, very close, intimate relationship. And so it's, it's similar to what happens when you think about what happens in a marriage or what, what happens in the process of adoption. You have two parties who we're not family, and then after this covenant is made, they are family. They belong to one another in a way that they didn't before. And that's what our Lord is about us as well. That's what he's been about from the very beginning, is bringing us into that relationship, that family relationship with him. It's different from the relationship of a servant to a master or an employer to a worker. It's closer than that. And that's real, it's really miraculous. Like if you stop and think about it, it's, it's miraculous that the God of the universe, the God who created 
you who created me, who created everything, holds us in existence, that God wants to be family with us. We hear that so often and it's so easy to take for granted, but it is truly miraculous. It is truly good news. This is the good news that Jesus came to proclaim. And so we see that. We're going to see that throughout the scriptures during the weeks of Lent, from the very beginning, actually. If we go all the way back to the beginning with Adam and Eve, we see that in the garden, our Lord created them in relationship with himself. It's common in Jewish and Christian tradition to think about the relationship of Adam with our Lord as the, the first covenant that was made in the very first days of human history. However, we, we know what happened in the garden. We know the story. We experienced it in our own lives that Adam and Eve turned away from that covenant and then they, they broke the covenant. And our Lord, our Father, who is a good father, he allowed his children to experience the just consequences of their actions. However, our Lord, who is a good father, also never, never stopped from that very moment endeavoring to bring his children back into relationship with himself. And throughout history, he chose particular people to represent the chosen people, and our Lord entered into covenants with them. And that's what we'll watch unfold throughout Lent. We'll see our Lord's covenant with Noah. We'll see the covenant with Abraham, with Moses, with David. We'll hear about, from the words of the prophets, a new covenant that our Lord will eventually bring about. And you'll be hearing more in the coming weeks about what that new covenant is but it's true and it's, it's not like the other ones. And again, what we're seeing here is really the unfolding of a love story, of, our, of a God who will stop at nothing to bring us back into relationship with himself. And we know, try as we might, we can't keep up our end of the bargain. I know that I can't keep up my end of the bargain. And that's the beauty of seeing that what happens, that what we know happens in the fullness of time. Our Father sent one who could hold up his end of the bargain on behalf of all of us. He sent Jesus who could say that ultimate yes to the covenant, who would never break the covenant, who always reacted or responded in love and in trust and obedience to what the Father was asking. And more so he responded not just as God, but he re responded as a, as a man, as a human being, just like us. And so again, that is truly good news. That is the, truly the good news of the gospel. And so I just I encourage you to listen for that throughout the prayers of, of Mass, throughout the different prayers during Lent because it's everywhere once you start listening for it. And so I just want to bring out one place that we can see it. And this is in one of the Eucharistic prayers that we hear prayed during Mass. It's one of the Eucharistic prayers for reconciliation. So it actually might be a little bit more common for you to be hearing it throughout these next weeks during Lent. And so I just want to read a few lines from that prayer. And I just invite you to really listen to the words and let them sink in. Maybe listen to for one or two words that really strikes your heart. So the prayer says this as it's addressing the Father. It says, Father, you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. It goes on, never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we broke your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your son, our Redeemer, with a bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. I love that. A bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. That's really how our Lord sees us and desires to hold us close. That's really what, what he's always wanted for us and what he invites us into. And so as we conclude, I just want to share one final reflection with you that's been on my heart as I've been preparing for Lent during these weeks. And it's actually taken from another prayer from the liturgy from today's Mass, from the Ash Wednesday Mass. The, the point that I want to pull out is actually from the Collect. It's from the prayer at the beginning of Mass that the priest prays. And in this prayer, the season of Lent is referred to as a campaign of Christian service. I love that. A campaign of Christian service. It kind of brings to mind military imagery and the, the fighting that we'll be doing against our sins and our vices and all of that. And what it, what it got me thinking about and praying with was a time a few years ago when I was praying with a meditation that was written by St. Ignatius of Loyola. And this meditation was about being called to follow Christ the King. And so I was really praying with that and just kind of entering into the scene, imagining myself being invited to 
to live the life of our Lord, with our Lord, to serve basically in his, in his army, to go where he goes, to live as he lives, and to join with him in, in the battle against, against the forces of, of darkness. And I realized as I was praying with this, as I was kind of entering the battlefield, that I was really way too small and way too weak to do anything, it seemed, of, of service or of substance during this battle. And at first that really disappointed me and I felt upset by that and frustrated by that. But what I realized as I continued to draw closer to Jesus, who was kind of in the center of the battlefield and everything that was unfolding, was that, that it wasn't our Lord's intention for me to, to do anything big or term, dramatic or um, important perhaps in the, in the eyes of the world. All that was mine to do was to stay very close to him. So close to him, in fact, that I was able to let him pick me up and hold me during the battle. And what I realized from that place, after I got over my pride of wanting to do everything by myself, is that everything actually turned out a lot better when I surrendered, when I let our Lord do for me everything and I didn't try and do it myself. And that's really just what I encourage you, I encourage myself to do during this season, is to really ask the Lord and see where he's, he's calling for that, that greater surrender and that greater trust. Lent can so often become a time where we, we get focused on what we want to do for the Lord and what we want to give up and what we want to accomplish. And those aren't bad things. Um, very often they're, they're born from a heart of generosity. However, I, I encourage you as we engage this season to focus on, on what our Lord has done for us already and what he's doing right now. And I invite you to really remember that anything that you desire to do for him comes first from his grace and his, his love of you and can only be done through his power. I just invite you to stay very close to him and, and to really follow where he leads you during this season. And so as we, as we embark upon this journey together, I invite you to, to just keep these words in mind as you're listening to the, the prayers and the scriptures throughout Lent. As we encounter the Old Testament readings, I invite you really to, to watch for that word of covenant, that word of familial love that our Lord is inviting the chosen people into and to watch for their response. And as we encounter the New Testament readings, especially the Gospels, I invite you to really watch, watch Jesus and watch how he's responding to the Father with trust and with love and with obedience. And then most importantly, I invite you to take some time in your own personal prayer and, and ask, ask the Lord what, what he's inviting you to, how he's inviting you to participate in this relationship of covenantal love with him, how he's inviting you to, to trust him and and then what your response will be to him. Thank you again so much for joining us. Please know that we'll be praying for you during this season, and we look forward to journeying with you together. God bless.